Hello, welcome back to Ken O'Connor Racing. Uh, this is going to be part three of our Banshee Cylinder Porting Series. And uh, before we get started, it's been about two months since we shot these. And initially, I could tell right away these were going to be popular. We've had over 2,300 views, which, you know, as far as YouTube go, it goes, isn't a lot. But comparatively with other videos that we've shot over the past few years, I believe i got maybe 40 videos out there. Uh, these things are really taken off, and a lot of you guys have, uh, you know, taken it to heart, and some people have really taken offense to this. These videos, <clears throat> in my opinion, have stirred up more shit than the auger at your local septic plant, and uh, I'm fine with that. Um, some builders had a hard time with it, and actually called, and some of the uh, builders' customers will, will refer to them as have uh, sent me some pretty interesting comments, and I'd just like to share a couple of them without sharing their names. First comment that I thought was rather uh, humorous <clears throat> was very short and simple. It said, flash card racing. Not really sure what that means, but I think it has something to do with the template. And um, I hope you enjoyed the videos because uh, that user has been blocked forever. Um, another one, this was really funny. It said, uh, it takes more than 30 minutes to port cylinders. Can you have no clue what you're doing? Um, I really don't know how to put it to you, bud, but uh, there's a lot of editing and cutting that goes on, and the 30 minutes of videos that you're watching probably represent about 13 hours um, of what you don't see, so I would probably recommend you don't try this. Uh, another person, you can do a lot more than this to these cylinders. Thank you, we're aware of that. Um, another one that I thought was funny, uh, from a builder actually. He said, it's just a cookie cutter port job. Well, what you're not seeing is, this is our summer porting. This is our winter template. What we've done, since we shot these videos, we've done five of these. Um, I've had the opportunity to ride two of them. And I gotta tell you, I was more impressed than almost any build we've ever put out of here. And if there's more that you can do to these cylinders, I think you're going to almost make it unrideable for what we're doing out here with them. Um, so I've been asked many times, Ken, why do you do this stuff here? You're giving away secrets. You're losing money. It's, these have been very, very, very financially helpful to this shop. Uh, a lot of you guys don't try this, and um, a lot of you do. But the ones that don't, the cylinders usually end up in here. So we, we've done five of these, and to the best of my knowledge, I have five more on the way. And in two months, that's, that's pretty substantial on top of everything else we do. Uh, customer Bill out in Delaware, we did it uh, for him. He put a YouTube video up with it running. It sounded a little bit rich to me, but he's, uh, he's been on Banshees for many, many, many years. I encourage you to watch his video. But uh, he said it's the uh, fastest bench he's ever been on, and he's done plenty of these. So he's more than impressed in actually coming up here maybe in a month to, uh, to share his build with us. And, you know, I'll surely take that for a ride, and, you know, we'll treat him to some trail riding and whatnot. Uh, Trevor in Wisconsin, he's a, uh, a, I did a blaster for him a while ago. And Trevor tried this himself, and Trevor loves it. He said just plenty of power, more than he's ever going to need for a trail ride. Again, these are not desert or dune rides or drag rides. It's a, it's a trail port. And I have another customer in Milwaukee that's sending the entire engine in here. He tried it himself and he was so impressed with the results he's worried about his crankshaft now. So are we getting a bottom end? Uh, and what a lot of people don't know is you know, we're a lot more than banshees and blasters. We do everything in here uh, just with the exception of uh, cylinder plating. We farm that out, but we do crankshafts, crankshaft welding, cylinder sleeves, we work on all makes models, two strokes, four strokes, uh, beryllium copper seat installation, you name it, and we're set up to do it. But uh, he's sending his uh, entire bottom end in here for a build and a crankshaft weld and, and a balance. So all in all, I think these have been pretty successful. All you guys that have tried this, hats off to you and uh, you know, good job. I haven't heard anything bad about this. If you've tried this and want to post a constructive criticism comment, I encourage you to do that. But uh, so far, all the results after two months are great on our end, and it seems like the customers like it too. So this is part three. We're gonna uh, we're gonna do a lot more to these cylinders. So uh, enjoy the vids. Keep watching, and uh, I appreciate it. The next segment is gonna be inside of the uh, the transfers. And if you go in, I'm just, I'm not going to open these up, but I am going to blend. You know, this is what we refer to as factory defects, casting flaws, whatever. 
Um, you don't have to chase them 100%, but you want to do everything in your power to get rid of little bumps like this. As your fuel charge is passing through here, this is going to make a lot of unwanted turbulence. So we're just going to do the best we can to smooth out all of these transfer ports. Again, don't don't really open them up. I mean, if that's what you want to do, you go ahead, but um, I'm not going to do that here. So I'm just going to go in with the uh, flame tip, 3-inch flame tip, and start working all of this. And if you got this far, you get the hard part done. You don't want to round this off too, too much. I mean, you can put a little radius on the edge, but just keep in mind, uh, these are stock cylinders, these are getting bored, but as as you start to open these up, you're going to get this in razor sharp, so I'm really not going to play with this line right here too much. Good. My transfer is cleaned up fairly well, and again, I'm, we're always going to go back and keep messing with stuff, but I uh, just roughed in for the most part, all the factory little casting bubbles are all removed, and that, that's really all we wanted to do. Um, this next part you're probably not going to be able to do, but we're going to do it on anything that we uh, that we poured in here. This little area is your sleeve. This is cast iron. Inside, you know, what's cast around it is all aluminum. Well, there's a little, you can hear it, there's a void here. And there's one here as well. There's some here. Where this sleeve meets the cast aluminum, there's lumps. So what we're going to do with this is I'm going to use my my right angle. These are pricey um, for a one out port job. Don't don't even bother buying them. They're um, I, don't, I think they're around 450 bucks, 400 bucks. And the interesting thing is uh, eBay. I've never seen one of these on eBay. And believe me, I look and I'd be buying them all up. But we're going to use this to go in and start blending our sleeve to our cast aluminum. This has to be turning in the right direction too. I actually have uh, two of these. And I load one for uh, right hand rotation and one for left. I just spin the bit around. So, and this is, these are special bits for the left hand rotation. But um, this just enables us to change stuff quicker. It's a, it's a pain and you start stressing out your collar and it takes time. Again, you know, time is everything in here. So, I'm going to use this and hit the left side of the cylinder. Then I'm going to spin it around and uh, do the bottom of the ports and I'll try and show you some of the voids in here as we go along but I'm going to get this one cleaned up first. this with the 90 degree and as you can see it's much smoother and you know it's a little thing but lots of little things they add up to some big stuff. Pretty much done with the uh, with the transfer ports and, and matching the uh, lead angle into the cylinder. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back into the exhaust. Now if you recall from the first video we widened uh, and angled the exhaust port quite a bit. So I'm going to do two things in this port. I'm going to get rid of this, if you can see it. You know, this isn't going to make a huge difference, but it shouldn't be there. I mean, definitely you have fuel coming back in on the scavenging effect, so we're going to get rid of all of that. And then I'm going to blend the inside of the port where I cut it out. I'm going to blend in about 5 millimeters, quarter inch, 200 thousandths, or right about that much, just so everything starts to smoothen out a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to use to do that is a three inch flame tip. It seems like there's a little burr around this port. I'll get rid of that too. Next thing I want to do is show you how to make everything really flat. The plan for this exhaust port is to polish it. Um, I've heard pros and cons about this from other people. I mean, we do what we do in here and we have good results. It works great for us. Uh, the, the reason I like to polish this port is twofold. Number one, 
if if you send me a cylinder and I'm charging you good money to do this, I don't want to send you something that looks like a piece of shit. I want you to open it up, look at it, and see that we actually did what we were paid to do. That exhaust port is polished. Does it make more horsepower? Probably almost immeasurable, no. Um, the one thing it does do is if you're running a quality two-stroke oil, and, and I, lo I love Maxima Super M, I also love Motul, that's going to burn clean. Anything that you polish in here and make it like glass is going to prevent any kind of carbon buildup. We see a lot of two-stroke cylinders in here every year, and I, I can tell you these, when they came in, these had a lot of carbon in them. So uh, it just goes to show you that the factory surface doesn't work. Um, I've had my personal quad apart many times with a polished exhaust port. I can take a paper towel and wipe it clean and it's right back to polish. So we know that this works. Um, I'm going to show you how to get this flat. We have a, you can make one or you can buy one. It's pretty simple. It's just a, it's a shaft that goes into the, into the grinder and then we put a slit in it. This right here is 40 grit sandpaper. It's pretty aggressive stuff. What this is going to do, I'm just going to wind it up. I'm going to stick it in the port and I'm just going to run it. I call it a butterfly. I'm not going to touch the port with it. I'm just going to keep it out. What this is going to do is make a very inconsistent cutting edge of the sandpaper. And what, that's, what it does is it follows the port and it'll flatten out any high spots. And that's, that's how we get these ports looking the way we do. So it's pretty easy. You just make sure it's in here before you start it up and don't pull it out. And if you're watching, and obviously you are, you can see, you know, there's a little low spot here and a low spot here. This stuff does its job. Uh, it's pretty inexpensive, but we're just going to keep running this. It's adhesive back. I don't worry about taking the adhesive off. We just run it like it is and it seems to work pretty good. breaks down as the edges get dull, get down the paper, it'll break off and just make a new edge for it. And I'll just continue with this until I get this pour all nice and flat. Okay, so uh, just as a matter of coincidence, we're doing this uh, Banshee porting video and uh, my friend Gary, right here from uh, Danielson, Connecticut, my hometown, uh, walks in with, uh, well, I'll let him tell you. What would you bring me today? Uh, I got you Banshee cylinders off my 2002 uh, Banshee 350 twin. He ported and uh, going to be bored over 20. And uh, how would you, how'd you hear about us? Uh, well, first of all, I knew you from the job we worked together, and uh, I looked on YouTube and searched around and found you. And, yeah, you did good work, so I figured bring it in, how to do it. So this is something you decided you didn't want to do yourself. Invest the money, buy the tools, and do it yourself. It's something I probably couldn't do myself. <laughs> well, um... Definitely bring it into a professional, so... <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, you can do it yourself, or uh, you can do what Gary does, but just living proof that uh, 2,300 views and rolling these videos are definitely working for me, and they're going to work even better for Gary, and nice to see you come in today, and... Uh, don't you worry about anything, we'll get you screaming. Oh, I can't wait to get it done. Just boost up your life insurance, you're going to need it. <laughs> and, and the day that you disrespect this build, it is going to humble you, my friend. Can't oh, sure. it. <laughs> okay, we finished up on the exhaust port, and uh, I'm confident with that because we're going we're gonna to go in and do a little bit more work in here with a, uh, a media blast. But um, this has all been done with the carbide cutters. So what I'm going to use next, and again, I don't, I don't want to polish in here but I want to make everything nice and smooth. So the last thing that's going to go through here, this is a 40 grit uh, sanding roll, Tootsie Roll they call them, and it's on the spiral mandrel. And uh, we're just going to go in and start really blending this in, and then um, off to the media blaster. What this is going to do is pretty much the same thing that happened in the exhaust port. It's going to take out a lot of cooling lines, but again, I'm really not interested in polishing this pour. I want it rough. It's trying to take out all the peaks, valleys, the hills. Keep everything nice and symmetrical. So I'll just go ahead and continue in this part of the cylinder. I'm not going to touch out here where we textured, but I'm going to continue in here 
until I'm confident all my lines are straight, especially the lines going into the cylinder. I want those nice and straight. All right, I did my final blend with uh, my Tootsie Roll. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back in a media blaster. And we're going to work this area pretty substantial. Uh, we use very, very, very aggressive media in here for, for doing this. And um, the reason I do that, it actually cuts the aluminum. So everything being roughed in, um, we're going to go through and blast the crap out of this thing. What that's going to do is it's going to put even more radiuses in here. It's going to flatten everything out. But the best thing that I like about it, yeah, it looks great. And it's, it's a great surface to run over. But anything, any voids that are in this cylinder, I'm going to be able to see them a hundred times better after the media blaster. So I'm going to pass this off to one of my uh, lackeys here at Kettle Corner Racing because uh, it's way too hot. It's uh, 98 degrees here in Connecticut and 100% relative humidity, and I am not sticking my 50-year-old arms in that sandblaster. So I'm going to have one of these guys do it, and we'll show you what it looks like when, when it gets done with it. All right, I just got this back from my buddy uh, out of the media blaster, and as you can see, I mean, this... You see any voids in here, they're going to show up. I can see this line, you know, there's just a little bit of skew, but... And notice on this, I didn't knife edge this, and you really... I, I refer to knife edging a lot. It's not really what I mean to say. You, you want to leave a flat, and you can see this. So you really don't want a sharp edge in here, but... Looking at this, this is going to bring out any flaws that are left in the cylinder. And this looks pretty good. Uh, we did this as well as the... Uh, well as the transfers, get you a shot of that. And the next thing we're going to do, now that this is out of the uh, media blaster, we're going to take this, flip it around, and we're going to polish the exhaust port. Well, this is kind of different. Um, a shot of my cameraman, my good friend, Dave Fontaine, and uh, we're letting him go in here and polish this port just to prove to you that if they can do it, anyone can do it. Alright, well, Dave ran that 220 grit up and down that port, and I just checked it out, and that thing is just so smooth. But the last step we're going to do, this is uh, pretty readily available. It's not what we use, but we're going to use it on this. This is Mother's Aluminum Polish, and uh, he's just going to take a little bit of that. And I can't stress that enough. Don't overload the cylinder, because you'll never get it to work. He's just going to take a little bit of that mother's with his finger, rub it inside of that port, and then uh, show him the tool you're going to use to buff it out, Dave. And uh, that's the same thing. It's just got a, uh, that's a piece of a t-shirt, to be honest with it, just a cotton t-shirt. And once a mother's in there, he's going to run that wide open, and that should take care of uh, any polishing that we have to do to this. And we'll show you the end result when we get done. Well, this is what we ended up with after we sent through the uh, cotton rag with the mothers. And uh, again, I mean, this is going to come out as good as the amount of time you want to spend on it. You can see, you can see a couple little imperfections in here, but in the, you know, the scope of the whole thing, they don't mean anything. And uh, for the most part, Dave did a good job. This was part three. I am going to carry this on. Uh, some of the other things we're going to do are case porting, and uh, actually, going to we're going to document this whole build, start to. Start to finish, soup to nuts. So, thanks for watching. KenOConnorRacing.com or, uh, yeah, you can call me Flashcard. I don't mind. Later.